Welcome back to another fun episode, um, fun conversations with uh, the second part of our personal grooming series. We have two very knowledgeable estheticians joining us today. Welcome, Debbie and Monica. I mean, I was looking at your combined experience. You have more than 40 years um, of experience <laughs> <Yeah>. doing, I mean, <laughs> you've probably looked at every kind of skin that you can think of. So thank you for joining us today. And uh, a couple of days back, we had a hair expert and she talked about all that we need to know about hair and what we should or we shouldn't do. And today we're going to talk about skin. And we have two people because skin is the largest organ in our body. I think that makes sense to have more people talk about more. I researched and it is um, eight pounds, 22 square feet of skin. And I bet many of us will see those numbers go up after this shelter in place ends given <laughs> <laughs> a lot of and a lot of, I hope it's not true for everyone, but most of people, that's where we're going. Uh, but Debbie, you've uh, been the owner of Divine Skin and Body Care for um, since 2005. And then you sold the business in 2018 to spend more time with your family. Of course, my well dried up. I was um, always <laughs> looking forward to going there. Um, and now I have to plan it. <laughs> <laughs> for your schedule how does it feel are you enjoying your time off i am i think it was the best decision i could have made is the time with my family is has been great and we my husband retired so him having me around more often is has been good wonderful and you you are still working part time so we are thankful for that and um, thankful that you're making yourself available for a, a, a few of us that are still uh, wanting you back there full time but uh, and monica goncalves you are also um, an esthetician with i must say a very impressive resume and i had a couple of questions for you but you also are an esthetician at divine and uh, so tell me a little bit of how you feel at this time uh, when, and that's a question for you as well, Debbie, at a time when everything is at a standstill. Um, of course, not like hair experts who have to cut hair to stay in touch. You can give facials to yourself, to anyone in the household on a regular basis. How is it feeling that you're not seeing your clients? Oh, I've definitely been giving uh, my daughters and my husband uh, facials for sure. So <laughs> because I'm going through withdrawals, I do miss it. Um, and I can't wait to get back into the spa. The time off has been, has been nice, but, um, I guess it's a time just to reinvent yourself and learn a new skill, which is what I've been trying to focus on during this time, but I can't wait to get back in there and actually do facials again for sure. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think skincare regimens is something that lends a degree of certainty at this time. And I think that's something many people are um, latching on to, to give them that comfort that we are used to. So we're going to get started with all the questions I have. I'm Aparna Madhureddy, Chair of the Open Space Advisory Committee for the City of San Ramon and your District 2 Rep for Contra Costa County Census 2020 Steering Committee. I am going to keep repeating, please respond to the census questionnaire till we get to 100%. Um, I know I should be talking for District 2, specifically for the City of San Ramon, where I come from but this is a national thing our economy is um, really taking a, a beating at this time so uh, every city will need uh, those critical funds so make sure you're responding to the census questionnaire as quickly as you can you can email me for questions aparna at aparna for .com, or you can go to the county website cococensus.org that's c-o-c-o census.org I'm going to ask you a question that I asked uh, the hair uh, stylist as well. Uh, with, with how we see our um, salons and spas, it's a place for us to rejuvenate, relax, unwind. Uh, was it okay to call it un, uh, a non-essential um, service and close them down? Do you think both of you? I think so, absolutely. It's like we work so closely with, with our customers, our clientele, I mean, we're literally just inches away from their face. So it was a little bit scary to think that if they do come in with some kind of symptom that they could pass it on, 
you know, to us. So I think it's the safest thing to do. It was the safest thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, one of the earliest guidelines that came out when this all this started was um, don't touch your face. Um, that must have been music to an aesthetician's ears. <laughs> yes. I mean, I know how many times you told me not to touch my face, and I disobeyed. So did you feel like, yes, now the conditioning is going to happen and we don't have to worry about that? Definitely. I am a big advocate of telling clients not to touch their face. And it's funny because a lot of people do it without even knowing that they're actually doing it. Even my husband will sometimes, you know, come up to me and stroke my face in a, like a loving way. I'm like, oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one less thing that you'll have to tell your clients now. Yeah. It's, it's a mind conditioning. And I'm sure yeah. many of us, um, even me, disobedient me has become much, much more um, careful of not touching anything. And most of the time, if you're out, you're wearing masks. So one more question about clients. How are you staying in touch with clients um, at this time and um, letting them know you're there as a reminder? I personally have been reaching out via text message. I'm not a big Instagram person. I need to get better about that. Um, I used to be when I first opened the business. I was all about Facebook and newsletters and all that. And then I kind of think I just got a little burned out. But Monica... She's awesome. Her Instagram is really good. Right, I'm Monica? trying. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I have been spending a lot of time on Instagram and promoting at-home facials and at-home skincare for clients to use during this time. And it does make me feel like I have purpose again. One of the big concerns of mine when this all happened is I kind of felt a little useless because I didn't know what else to do besides you know, being an esthetician, that got taken away from me instantly. So That's it still makes me feel like I'm doing lovely. something I'm passionate about. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, yes. And that something. so my next question would be, hi, Shadi, I can see you. I don't see the other participants, but welcome everybody who's joined. Um, what would your uh, booking process look like when you are open for business? And what would be an absolute deal breaker? I know in my case, I can safely say, if I have a pimple and I pop it, I get a lecture from Debbie, but that's <laughs> me. I, I like to come with a clean face to you so you don't have to work too much on me. It's like, you know how the cleaners come to your house and you clean your house <laughs> it's, it's that way for me but what would your booking process look like who gets priority booking how would you manage your clients both of you and and what would be an absolute deal breaker oh my god you did this i'm not seeing you right now that's a mm -hmm. lot of oh. warn, warn all clients well i think monica and i both have have a lot of clients that have already been pre-booked out and if they've already had appointments, we did not take them off the schedule so that we can contact them and put them back in in the order that they were already on the books. And then whatever spaces that are going to be open and available will go to anybody else that would like to get in. Well, that's, that's just great. So that's how Monica is doing it too. Yeah. So, so it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So which means if I booked for April, which I did, Mm -hmm. And now we are pushed out. So you're going to automatically push me in the order that we came in. Exactly. exactly. I'll be contacting all those clients first. Perfect. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Let's get to the questions. So this one was so interesting and so unique. I, I was wondering know. about him. Did he go to, to delivery? Who? Who are we talking about? Okay, we need to mute every, everybody, please mute yourselves. <laughs> You'll get a chance to ask questions at the end. So I'm just keeping, um, I'm giving you the flexibility to mute and unmute. But first we need to get the questions that people sent me. I wasn't even sure what to say to this one. So I'll let you answer. I have been using hand sanitizer on my face as a precaution when I'm outside. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Is that okay to do? And if not, what are my alternatives? Uh, especially I, when I'm at Costco or grocery store, I get freaked out. So I start using my hand sanitizer. And if I'm okay with using it, how much should I use? I was laughing when I was reading this question. I didn't go ahead, Monica. To me, so go ahead. <laughs> well, since hand sanitizer is alcohol-based, it's definitely going to strip your skin. And she can actually make her skin open for infection by doing that. 
So I would definitely, big no-no. So yeah, but I'd let Debbie kind of, her thoughts as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I was thinking the same thing. If that's gonna dry out that top layer of the skin, which has a lot of, it's a protective layer. You, you need that protection, so you don't wanna dry it out. So do not put hand sanitizer on your face. Just don't touch your face. That's so all. Is, is the damage skin. done? Do you think the damage is done already? Can they? It depends correct? on how, how, how much has she used it already. It would depend on that. But she just well, needs to, at this point, just stop. From her email, I gathered pretty much from the time this was announced. And uh, so she's been using it. She felt if it is good for the hands, she can use it around. The, I don't know. That was my assumption. Yeah. No, she just wants to really, really hydrate now. Really hydrate okay. and protect her skin. Well, thank you for that. And uh, hopefully others who are doing it may or think about it can understand. Caffeine has taken over my life. I feel dehydrated, not all the time, but sometimes and at some points during the day. If I increase my water intake too, will that balance things out? Do you want to answer, Monica? Yeah, it, it can balance things out. But of course, you do want to limit your caffeine intake because it will dehydrate the skin. But I know we're in a very unusual time. If that's what's keeping you sane, <laughs> then um, just drink plenty of water, probably a little bit more than what you're um, used to. And uh, a part B to that question is, do you recommend taking any, anything internally, pills or tablets or something to keep the skin moist and hydrated? Yeah, there is definitely different supplements that you can take um, that help with the skin. I would definitely um, maybe take like a collagen supplement those are always good. And of course, right now you really want to load up on your vitamin C and like your immune boost um, supplements to help with just healing the body from the inside out to protect it when you are, you know, exposed out in the public. Okay. Um, I'm indoors mostly. Um, do I still need to moisturize as much as I was when I was out? Um, I have acne and oily skin, and I'm starting to see stress-related breakouts. Am I over-moisturizing? You can over-moisturize if it's a heavy humectant, like moisturizer. Like, you don't want to use a heavy cream. There are a lot of other types of moisturizers that are serum-based and have hyaluronic acid. So that's going to hydrate the skin just as well as, as any other moisturizer. But you definitely still want to use some type of wash or toner that has salicylic acid. That okay. and, and exfoliate. And if so, you're doing those steps, you need to still hydrate. And I have questions related to that, but there was one question that came up. What is the difference between a serum and a, and a moisturizer, a cream? And which one should I be using at this time given I'm indoors? So that was two questions well, in one. Serums are gonna go in a little bit deeper into the skin and work deeper down where moisturizers, creams are gonna be barriers to hold the moisture in on the top. Okay, um, retinol, retinol usage at this time, can I increase it? Um, with I have. You, you kind of just wanna, you, if you wanna get a little bit more of exfoliation, you can bump it up, but again, just because you're at home, you don't want to create inflammation on the skin. And sometimes retinol can make you a little irritated and, and you get that peeling on the skin. So you don't want to harm your skin just because you're home right now and no one's going to see you. With retinol, you always want to acclimate your skin to the product. Mm -hmm. um, so start off by using it maybe every other day. And then when you feel like your skin's able to, increase that to every night. Okay, and I think they were doing that. They just were thinking, can they increase it if they're not going out as much in the sun? Um, yeah, they definitely can, especially if they're not um, getting a lot of irritation from it, then I would definitely go ahead and increase it. Okay, um, how, how often should I exfoliate now since I'm not using makeup? Uh, should I skip it completely and use a face towel as a scrub? I would continue. I Go, oh, go ahead. You want to go, Debbie? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I would continue to exfoliate because you're still getting that accumulation of cells on the skin, even though you're at home. Many people do over exfoliate. So I would exfoliate one to two times a week. 
the only thing that I'd be careful is if you are using um, a scrub, be careful with those. Some of them can have really harsh particles in it that can actually cause damage on the skin. So try not to over scrub and just a little bit of advice. If you feel like your scrub is a little harsh, you can always add a little bit of a facial oil or cleanser to it to soften it up as well. I prefer more of the chemical exfoliate, exfoliations like your lactic acid, glycolic acid, and then there's your um, enzymes, which I love, and those are derived um, from fruits like papaya and cranberry. I see. And I know Debbie has trained me well, so I know what to use, when to use, but mm -hmm. if they are using a glycolic based cleanser or something, the, the scrub should be avoided um, even more, shouldn't it? Not necessarily because cleansers go on and, and get washed right off. So they're not setting on the skin. So you so, can still exfoliate with a scrub a couple of times, you know, like she said, one to two times. Once or, two, once or mm -hmm. twice. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, my skin feels irritated, turns red when I wear face masks. I have tried every cloth fabric and every type of mask. And uh, will this cause breakouts eventually? Am I doing something wrong? What can I do to prevent irritation and redness? Um, should I follow a separate skincare routine for that area? So these are from two, three people I got. I just grouped it in one, but I can repeat it. So first question is irritation and redness when they wear the face mask, but they have to wear it. So what, what is the solution for that? Do you want to answer, Monica, or do you want me? Um, you can go ahead. So I, again, would recommend anything calming, any kind of botanical type serums that are going to have some calming ingredients like the aloe. Um, you want to be able to just calm it down. SkinCeuticals has a really good one called Floritin, and that's a calming gel. And I would recommend looking into putting serums on like that instead of anything heavy or, or active ingredients like alpha hydroxies. I would probably avoid that while wearing the mask and use something more like the um uh what i'm losing my chain of thought what is it the one from skinceuticals monica the green one it's not florida oh um i forget i, <laughs> I just will have that. That the other day too. i know it's like wait why am i losing my train of thought on that we zero? have one aesthetician Phyto, i'm sorry speak. Phyto, Phyto corrective job yes yes that's right that's yeah for, for, uh, for as we move forward, if one is speaking, the other one can Google. You can cheat. You can. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Phytocorrective gel is amazing. It's great for redness and for irritation and calming the skin. Wonderful. And now, should I follow a separate skincare routine for the area that gets irritated after I remove the mask? I personally like, would. Yeah. Follow a You can one. treat different areas of your skin with different products for sure. Okay. Do I still need sunscreen if half of my face is covered with a mask and the rest with sunglasses, but I'm going out for a walk? Absolutely. It should be automatic every day. Just put that sunscreen on. It's like no matter if you're driving in the car or going just from in your house, UV rays come in through your windows. It's just always best to wear a to sunscreen. Wear the sunscreen. Okay. Definitely. I love that um, when we used to drive, when we used to in the past, and one side got <laughs> all tan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the other side had a different right. color completely. I put it so, on even if I know I'm not going anywhere. I still, I just automatically, it goes on. Oh, I wow. do too. Yeah. Okay. What, and again, this is, I, two people asked for their skin type. So I'm just assuming there may be others who have it. So what kind of do it yourself face mask? can I use at this time for acne skin and dry skin? But I'm assuming it would also be for oily skin and combination skin. So if you have a, a routine that they, or a face mask routine that they can follow. There is one question on skincare routine as well. So if you want to combine the two, uh, we can get that answer. So with the mask question, I never recommend clients use things out of their refrigerator. <laughs> Or their, or their pantry to create a mask themselves. Sometimes that does more damage than good on the skin. 
most skincare companies are still selling their products. So I would support your local business and purchase a mask from them. Okay. Uh, but there is nothing they should be trying out at home. It should be all um, whatever. Is I mean, the most gentle type masks that you can do at home are like, um, if, if your skin is like your forehead sometimes gets bumpy and congested, you can mix a little baking soda and water, and that's a nice little oxidizing exfoliant. Um, there's Greek yogurt. That's always good. Um, I know that my granddaughter likes to experiment in the, in the kitchen with different masks. But like she said, you never know what your outcome is going to be or how sensitive you're going to react. So kind of do it at your own risk, but stage of the more gentle things. Like I know I've seen coffee grounds mixed with olive oil and honey, things like that. You can come up with concoctions. Pinterest has a ton, but proceed at your, you know, with caution. I love the Greek yogurt thing, but you have to mention it should not be flavored. People like and me no sugar. Just eat it all. <laughs> exactly. No sugar in it. <laughs> no sugar. Plain Greek yogurt. The reason I asked that question was there was a question, um, and I'm sure a lot of people are in the same situation. I lost my job and cannot afford to buy the products that I was buying. Yeah. That's why they, I believe that question came in. Alternatives for skin types. Um, I have combination skin. What can I use? So that's why I felt that we should give them some uh, alternatives. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Time. I mean, many people are hurting and we want to make mm -hmm. sure they also are taking. You want your clients coming back to you with great skin <laughs> right <laughs> even though we haven't been seeing you but we want to have those options so i know yogurt is a great option it's also lactic right it helps with that mm -hmm. um i'm becoming an esthetician even as i'm speaking to you <laughs> <laughs> any suggestions to help with pigmentation monica you uh, want to take it or do you want me to yeah i'll i'll start and then uh -huh. You could probably add in some things too. So with pigmentation, um, what happens with it is it shows up from previous um, years of being in the sun. So you'll notice it later on in life. So the sun is obviously a contributing factor. And then you have um, hormones too, which is a big contributing factor in the pigmentation. The first thing that you should be doing is using a sunscreen for sure. Um, because that's just going to make it worse. And I like to use a, um, a physical block instead of a chemical block because the physical is going to give you more protection and it doesn't have the chemical in it. And using some type of lightener or brightener, what happens is you want to suppress the melanin. And what you want to get is a tyranase inhibitor. So if you've heard that term before, if you've done research on pigmentation, you've probably heard that. Um, and a tyranase inhibitor has the ingredient of either lactic acid, azelaic acid, kojic acid, um, ascorbic acid, which would be in your vitamin C. So um, those are a few key ingredients you would look out for. And of course, be careful being out in the sun because the pigment will get worse when it's exposed to sun. Monica, those were some very big words and terminologies you <laughs> used. I, it's beyond my understanding, but I'm assuming um, people, clients who are going to their estheticians would know. And that brought, reminded me and brought me to this question that I missed. You have, and I've heard about microderm abrasion. What is hydroderm abrasion and what is micro channeling? You are an expert in those two, and I think I'm <laughs> missing out on some very heavenly treatments. Please explain that. So hydrodermabrasion uses hydro technology to infuse, extract, and exfoliate. So it uses, it's a machine that uses um, a serum base to infuse the skin with either hyaluronic acid or whatever conditions that you're concerned with. So it's a three-in-one. It's kind of like a less expensive expensive version of the hydrofacial. So that's why we call it the hydrodermabrasion. Um, so it kind of has that same type of um, hydro technology. It's just a little bit different. 
the, when you say extract, is it extracting blackheads or the extra fat that we will all be coming back with? <laughs> after this? What, I, what wish it, I wish it did that. <laughs> so it yes, it does. It has a strong vacuum suction and that suction does help to um, suck out mm -hmm. debris and toxins as well as help with um, just getting the blood flow and circulation and draining lymph from underneath the skin which contributes to a lot of anti-aging as well. Oh, so it would help with wrinkles and, um, and um, make us all look all glowy after this treatment? Yes, I, I it's, this treatment. it's definitely a treatment to help with fine lines, wrinkles, um, pigmentation. The only skin type that I wouldn't recommend it for is if you have rosacea because it has such a um, uh, kind of a little bit of a harder suction on it, um, it could irritate the rosacea on the skin. But other than that, um, it's good Anybody's, for all skin types. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about micro-channeling? It sounds like you're channeling some energy, but it has to be something with needles. So just in case you ask me, I do have it right in front of me. So micro-channeling is skin rejuvenation. And I don't know if you can, let me hold it up here. Okay. So can you see that and hear that? This is yes. the tool that I use for micro channeling and it has the micro channels that we create in the skin to help absorb product at the deepest level. So is, this, is this like the derma roller where you prick and then you put product? So that it's different in the sense that we're not puncturing. We're just working on the surface of the skin. But what happens is we're using a vitamin A, a form of retinol to infuse it with. And even after the treatment's done, it still works into the skin to help um, with collagen production. So it's, it's, it's an amazing wow. treatment. I yeah. cannot wait for you guys to open up. So <laughs> I, I just want it all on my face. That sounds so exciting. Is this a new product in the market? I haven't heard about it before. It is Have new. you heard? Yeah. Have you heard of microneedling? Yes, you familiarized me with that a little so bit. It's and I similar ran to my, it is similar to microneedling, although like she said, it's nano tip, so it's not going to puncture the skin. So, so I will feel has, that. It's, it's okay. been around. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you help suggest products for psoriasis and eczema? Psoriasis definitely needs, for me, I think it needs more of a... Um, medical type cream on it. My daughter suffers from that and it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one, that and eczema both. It's like, it's, your skin is so sensitive. Unless, Monica, do you know of a product that works? Because my daughter has gone through several and it's definitely something that's coming from internal. It's coming from within and you need to correct what's going on with your gut health and what's going on inside your body to really help correct the eczema. And the one thing that really helped for her was juicing celery. Yeah. Celery juice every morning and juicing different things, concoctions, has probably helped the most. So they should be juicing a lot more at this time if they don't yeah. have access to yes. this. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Okay. For both of both those conditions. Yes. Um, so so I, was I was what I just started using a line called osmosis and some of your listeners, if they have concerns, I would really check out their website because they are so into correcting what's going on on the inside, which shows up on the outside of our skin. So if it's something they're interested in, I would definitely um, give, them, give them a try and, and see what they think. And this is what is osmosis? Osmosis, osmosis okay. beauty, yeah. Okay, and I'll take all that information so I can post it when I post this video. Um, you already answered about serum versus uh, cream. Puffy eyes, dark circles, and wrinkles. What, what can I use? And I'm again assuming these are people who are not able to buy their regular products, maybe financial situation or something. So what can they do to not? So with puffy eyes and dark circles, some of it is genetic. Some of it is what you're, again, digesting, and it's coming out from the outside. But this is something that you can try to treat at home without having a serum if you can't afford it. Um, of course, we suggest doing both. But if they can't, um, 
what you can use is I have like you can these rollers are fairly inexpensive you can put these in the fridge and you can put them underneath the eye from the corner outward to the temple and then lift corner outward to the temple and that really helps to reduce the puffiness um, on the skin what happens is when we're sleeping at night there's no movement going on in the eyes so when we wake up um, our eyes are puffy because there's no muscle movement there's no circulation going on and that's what causes the, the under eye circles the puffiness it's all those toxins that are just sitting there and they need to get moving that's why facial massage is so important there's also mm -hmm. the um and these are fairly inexpensive too the gua sha stones what is it it's a gua sha stone it's an ancient um chinese technique again you can get these nice and cold and put them in the fridge and then again corner of the eye and then outward to the temple so you always want to drain you're going to drain outward because you want that healthy blood flow and circulation to start pumping again and if you don't have any of those tools you can even use a piece of ice honestly and then just same motion from here and you can even if you want it to you make sure your hands are washed <laughs> and pressure points all through here. We have so many muscles in our face that get so tight, so it's good just to break up all that tension, get healthy blood flow, circulation going, and the skin just benefits from it. So I'm you assuming, even, uh, those, I know the roller, my daughter suggested that, but I felt it was just too time consuming for me, so I just said, no, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Are you sure that? But they can order this online easily. This is available, right? Yeah. Even mm -hmm. the, the stone that you recommended. It, I mean, we don't want, and I'm assuming that's the lymph fluid um, drainage that you're talking about. If nothing, stick your fingers in the freezer for a, as long yeah, as you yeah. can and just do it that way. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the cheapest option. But yeah. you, can even, you, you can even use cold spoons. Put a couple of cold spoons in, there, in your freezer. Oh, and that would help too. Would yeah. that help with wrinkles? I mean, I know not the wrinkles that are heavy wrinkles, but, but the ones that are showing up at this time. Um, would the, would that same thing work? It does or? actually, because when you don't have the healthy blood flow throughout the skin, it gets sluggish. And so we want to help like get that blood flow going. Um, and then the skin will just in turn look plumper and vibrant and um, just bright. Well, I'm going to stick a bunch of spoons and just stick them all over. Let's <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> talk that means it was just too much. Um, I, I could use some help with blackheads um, and pimples. Oh my God, this one is somebody similar to me. Can I pop them? I know the answer to that one, but it came in. I need to still get the answer for them. If yes, how would I do it? I pop well, them I, with no process. <laughs> okay, so I don't ever recommend anybody popping them at home because they usually do it incorrectly. But I get it. If it's a huge white head and it's just about to rupture on its own, you can wrap your fingertips with a little bit of tissue and just wiggle from underneath up. You don't want to spread that acne bacteria and have it, ha then you're going to get more of a breakout. And you, if you're pushing here, you may spread it up here and you may get a cluster of more pimples. So it's very, it, it's definitely best to leave it to the professionals that know how to extract properly. But being that we're not doing that right now, you can wrap your fingers and do a little wiggle wiggle and see if it pushes up and out. That's, that's what I would recommend, but don't do it with your bare fingernails because there's so much bacteria and germs under our nails. And definitely don't email me for help. I will give you the wrongest way to pop the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have it all over the, but blackheads, would it be the same thing? Would they follow a similar process for blackheads? Yeah, I mean, if you have salicylic acid, it's best to use the salicylic acid um, in your wash or a toner to help help dissolve the blockage that's in the pore because the dead skin cells, oil, makeup, pollution, dirt, all of that traps inside and sticks to the lining of the pore. So salicylic acid will help loosen it up and also kills acne bacteria, but it will definitely make doing any kind of wiggling and, and trying to remove them a lot easier. If you just do it on without prepping the skin first, you're gonna damage your skin. Okay. 
how many times should I be using the toner if I have dry skin or if it feels drier now than it did before? I wouldn't use a toner that's stripping my skin that much. If you have very oily skin, you can handle a toner that has salicylic or glycolic in it. If not, you can just use a nice balancing soothing toner just to help remove any makeup that you might have left on when you did your cleanse. Um, but if you're getting dried out from it, just back off of it a little bit. How many days can you back off realistically? Should you be using a toner every day? It depends or, on the type um, of toner. There's so many different toners that have different ingredients, so it's really hard to say. Um, I know the toner that I use is a pretty gentle toner. It just ha helps to balance out the pH in my skin. I don't necessarily need a toner that has alpha hydroxies in it because I don't have acne or oily skin. But if somebody is using something that has those harsher ingredients, maybe do it every other day. Maybe, maybe back off just a day. Okay. Could you recommend the toner you're using or is it different for different skin types? So maybe different what works for different for you skin types. Definitely so everybody's to skin is different. I see. Okay. Um, anything uh, online? Is there anything I can do online or um, are you offering anything online? That's one of my last questions. I have another one, but it's the repeat of uh, what we have. Monica and I both have put together some skincare kits for home facials. Um, I did sell out. I know Monica still has some that she has ordered that are coming in. Um, Monica, you want to tell them about yours? Yeah, so I have two different kits. One is again from the Osmosis Beauty line and another is from Cosmetics, a line that I just um, started working with. And it comes with a full little mini facial. You get the cleanse, exfoliation, mask, um, finishing serum, and I even have some little sheet masks that I'm gonna throw in there as well. So those have not, my osmosis ones did sell out. Um, it was a pretty good deal. So I won't even explain them because we don't have them, but um, the cosmetics should be coming in soon. I just placed an order in. And on my Instagram, I'm always giving little tidbits. I might even do like um, a demo, a facial massage. Debbie and I took a, a little class yesterday about facial massage and different techniques. So maybe we'll do something like that on Instagram, like how to give yourself a facial massage during this time, because that's easy and inexpensive and something that could really brighten and perk up your skin. And uh, we were talking about this before we started. So when you are doing that, do you give even makeup ideas, tips for Zoom meetings? And we talked briefly. So if you <laughs> have a quick tip that they can do to brighten up their eyes or maybe just, we're just focusing on the top half of our body nowadays. Yeah. We just don't even care about. Yeah. Well, as you can see, I love blush. <laughs> Every time I'm feeling a little bit, um, you know, like sluggish, I'll, I, I use blush. Highlighters are awesome to brighten up the skin. You can even use a little bit of a highlighter in this corner of the eye area, this just to brighten. Um, but yeah, honestly, I don't do makeup, but those are just my little tips. Do you have any little insight tips, Debbie? Yeah, I kind of just do the same thing. I've been wanting to let my skin just breathe and I haven't really been putting on a lot of foundation or blush or anything. If anything, I do have a little bit of dark circles, so I use concealer. So concealer and a little mascara is pretty much all I've been wearing and my lip gloss. But um, I think right now is a great time to just let our skin breathe. Correct. Unless and you absolutely so, have to go out. And... So the other question was um, related to what I had asked earlier on, um, a skincare, an easy skincare regimen that most people can follow. It doesn't matter what skin type they have. What do you recommend? It's like a simple thing that they should remember. Three simple steps should just be cleanse, hydrate, protect. If they want to keep it super simple, okay. if they, they want can... to add in another step, then it's a correct step. So you, you would want to add in some kind of correction product that I use all my correcting products while I sleep because that's when your skin is healing and repairing. So you want to put on your retinols at night or any kind of skin lighteners that you're using for pigmentation. Um, I do everything at night. And then during the day, I cleanse, hydrate, protect. That's what I do for my very basic line. 
or my basic regimen. And that, that could apply to any skin type, anything that they are um, dealing with at this time. That's the most basic uh, thing that they should be working with. Is what at least the basics. At least okay. the basics. A good cleanser, a good hydrator, and your sunblock, for sure. I love vitamin C, so I add vitamin C. I mean, not I. Everybody should be using vitamin C. It's an antioxidant. It's another layer of protection from the sun. It brightens the skin. It helps with cell repair. So mine is cleanse, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid. It's a serum. And then I moisturize in sunblock. So that might be too many steps for somebody, but that's kind of the gist of a normal, what I think is a normal skincare regimen. Do you agree, Monica? That's, yeah, I definitely agree. A lot, of, um, a lot of people don't wash their face and that's such an important step. And now you hear about saying, if you don't wash your face, it's gonna cause premature aging. And the reason why they say that is because you have all those toxins on your skin from the day that you really wanna get off of your skin. Um, so I can't stress enough how important it is to wash your face importantly. And like Debbie said, you wanna use an antioxidant during the daytime to help protect against free radical damage, retinol at night to rejuvenate, stimulate collagen, and then of course your SPF. So just a few easy steps. And I think I kind of follow almost the same regimen as Debbie does. Um, one question that just came in, I don't wash my hair as often. Would that affect my skin um, if I'm sleeping with an unwashed hair that has obviously, I'm assuming has been unwashed for a few day days? Uh, would that cause breakouts? And I'm thinking that's the question. Monica, or you want me to answer? Yeah, go ahead, Debbie. It depends if you have an oily scalp. Like my granddaughter does have very oily hair. She's 17, almost 18. If she goes three or four days without washing, I, you can just kind of see the oil coming down onto her forehead, which on her hairline, she breaks out. So I definitely would still give extra care to your, to your forehead and around the, the, the line of your hairline because those oils will kind of come down onto your skin and cause some blockage, some breakouts. Okay, maybe that's what they're experiencing. So wash your hair, yeah. make sure you're washing your hair. Yeah. <laughs> My <laughs> questions are done. If you, uh, Monica and Debbie, have anything else to share about products or, or services, please share that. And then everybody who has questions, please unmute yourself. I, I think you have that flexibility um, and you can ask questions. And thank you, ladies. That was a very um, a lot you. of information. And we can't look forward, I can't wait to come and uh, see you and look forward to that day. But they say, go. <laughs> yeah. no. so. Thank you, Monica and Debbie. I'll go first. Aparna, your questions were so comprehensive. I think they, they covered a lot of the questions that I had in mind to ask the ladies. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely been trying times. I'm actually an essential worker and um, I'm a nurse at the hospital and I haven't really been able to put a lot of products on my skin because um, we're trying to um, increase the duration of use on our masks and we've been instructed not to put too many products to be able to use our masks for a longer duration of, of time. Um, any recommendations on something light? Because especially the N95s, they put a lot of pressure on the skin. And I feel like there's definitely more reddening um, in the evening when I come home on the areas where pressure has been applied on where the mask has been worn. Any um, particular products that you guys recommend applying as a base where it's not too greasy, but it, it does kind of give enough protection and barrier to protect the skin while those masks are worn long periods of time. Monica, I, yeah. I love the phytocorrective yeah. gel from mm -hmm. SkinCeuticals. So okay. for sensitive skin, it's gonna help with calming and it's gonna hydrate. And it's also, it, there's a lot of um, botanicals in there. So it's not gonna be irritating at all but you're going to still feel the hydration and the correcting from the ingredients that are in it. Should I, I be wearing that the night before or be before going to work? When, when is a good time to use that gel? You can actually use it twice a day. Oh, okay. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would recommend, Monica? The only other thing I can think of, um, but it would be heavier that you can use, there are like post peeling balms that you can put on maybe at night if you are experiencing a lot of redness in that area. Um, each line has their own different ones, even maybe a little bit of aqua four. If you are really chapped and dry, you can use that as well. And mm -hmm. that's just a drugstore product, the aqua four. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Great. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And thank you. <laughs> um, Debbie and Monica, if you can text me or email me those names that you're giving, I can at least sure. put that out when I'm creating the post. So people who have those problems, they can immediately see. And um, if they have questions, they can always reach out to you. Anyone else um, has any questions? I, I don't know if um, uh, you, I think you answered pretty much everyone. Pretty much all of them. Yeah. So nobody else? Well, that was another very informative episode I think we covered. And um, we, we so appreciate you and the work you do. All, all estheticians, all, all service providers, healthcare providers, grocery store workers. I mean, everyone is so appreciated at this time. We understand the importance um, of, of your services a lot more. Um, than we ever understood. And we, hopefully nobody took you for granted or your service. I, <laughs> uh, I appreciate everything that you guys do. And Shadi, thank you so much for what you are doing. Uh, it is a, um, an, a, a really immense effort by everyone to stay together, do things together and get out of this together. So thank you yes. so much. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you, thank ladies. You. Thank yeah. you. Really wonderful um, conversation. Enjoy. Thank you. And we'll Thank send you. over a list of, of yes. the product lines that we recommend and, okay. and you can add them to your, to your post. I will. And I'll also put it on the slide when I create this video as a um, presentation. So I'll put all that info and your contact information as well. Awesome. Right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Take Parna. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care, ladies. Be safe. Bye. You Thank too. You. Thank you. Thank you.